Well, hello, Internet. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain exactly how people make decisions. And I'm going to do that by analyzing what is called metaprogramming, which is based off of a branch of psychology called neurolinguistic programming. More specifically, we're going to cover how people make decisions, develop preferences, focus attention, communicate, and work well. And this presentation is brought to you because I received this request from John429130. First, I want to review metaprogramming. If you didn't watch the first part of the decision-making tutorial, you should most definitely watch it. But because it's been a couple weeks since I created that, I'm going to briefly go over what metaprogramming is. Metaprogramming is the programming in your brain that you use to react in all situations. When we experience anything in life, we ignore and generalize most of the information. The info we do store is used to react in future situations. Our metaprograms help us to use past info we gathered to make quick decisions immediately. Metaprogramming, for example, helps a person reason, gather information, decide on preferences, deal with stress, emote, and make decisions, which pretty much encapsulates a lot of the things that lie there above it. The information we store in our mind is heavily reliant on one of three main senses, being either visual, auditory, or touch or feeling. Touch or feeling are pretty much the same sort of thing. If you're talking to someone, they will better understand you and make better decisions based off of whether the information is provided in their favored sense. The sense that they favor is known as their chosen representational system. For example, visuals will talk about color, location, distance, size, and brightness. The reason why is all of their information, or a large amount of it, is stored in their brains in the form of pictures. They literally re-see what happened for a split second right before they make a decision. Hence, the other ones might remember something they were told, or actually reenact a whole entire event over and over again. Those are your feeling or touch or kinesthetic, if you want to use the jargon term type of people. What's covered in this video? Well, I'm going to cover how we input, process, and output information based on emotions, how we decide, develop preferences, and focus attention. What I'll do is I'll provide my chosen way of making each of these decisions. I'll then go over the other ways that people use to make decisions, the tools or the programs in their brain that help them make decisions. And then I'll teach you the questions to ask to find out how exactly that person makes decisions. And of course, you can use these same questions to figure out how you make decisions. And I want to emphasize that there is no right nor wrong way to make these decisions or to see the world in your specific way. Everybody's different and these are just the different ways that we differ. First, I'm going to go over the stress coping style. This is just simply how we cope with stress. People are either assertive, aggressive, or passive. I prefer the assertive coping style in that when I'm put in a stressful situation, I try to figure out how I can change myself to reduce the stress level. Other coping styles include the fight being the aggressives or the flight being the passives. An aggressive person will confront that which is causing stress, while a passive person will do whatever they can to get away from the stress. Nobody is purely aggressive or passive in all situations, but each person will show a preference over time. And if you want to find out what they are, just ask, what do you do when you are put in a stressful situation by someone? Do you confront them, avoid them, or think about how you could change to subdue the stress level? Or you could ask, if something is creating stress in your life, do you avoid it, confront it, or spend time figuring out how to subside the stress? Then you have the authority style, meaning what authority governs a person's decision making. I very strongly make decisions based off of my own internal values, meaning that I'm self-referent. Others rely heavily on the general values of society as a whole. They believe everyone should follow a very strict set of rules and live in a world of shoulds and should nots. If you want to find out what somebody is, just ask them, are your values based off of your own rules or those general rules, be they societal or biblical? Or more simple, when making decisions, do you trust your gut or do you think about how people may judge your decisions? Then you have the emotional state, meaning, are you more of a thinking person or a feeling person? Again, there are no right or wrongs. 
I process data by thinking my way through it, meaning I'm a thinking type emotional person. Other people process data by completely immersing themselves emotionally. They see the world as a whole while ignoring the minute details. Thinking type people see the details but miss the emotional impact of situations. If you want to find out what someone is, just ask them, when making a decision do you rely on facts or personal values? Or when deciding on something, do you base decisions on facts presented or on your gut? Then you have activity level response styles, meaning a person is either inactive, reflective, or active. I act quickly when put in most situations. I try to solve problems rather than reflect on the relevant and irrelevant information. This makes me a reflective type person. Others do not seem to engage information processing unless they are forced. These are your inactives. If you want to find out what you're dealing with, just ask, do you tend to enjoy getting something done, spending time to get it done with the best results, or avoid it if it isn't worth your time? Or you could say, do you study something for a long time before acting, get the general idea and then act, or you just wait until things work themselves out? Now we'll get into the convincing style, meaning how long it takes for someone to be convinced of something. And we're going to talk a lot about representational systems and how they can help convince a person to believe what you want them to believe. People are either difficult to convince or easy to convince. It's really quite simple. I require a large amount of convincing before I will believe something is true. Other people are convinced normally based on just whether something is sold, targeting their chosen representational system. Their representational system, if it is used in trying to persuade them, will make things sound more believable. This is what someone means when they say, that sounds believable. That is an auditory person saying, you are speaking in my representational system. That's why they say, that sounds believable. A kinesthetic or a feeling or touch type person would say something like, that feels right. While a visual would say something like, that looks right. People differ in regards to how many times something must gel with their representational system before they make decisions as well. For some people, something must feel right, meaning kinesthetic, in their chosen system. I keep referring to kinesthetic, that's the same as touching or feeling type people. Other people require it to sound right many times before they make a decision. Most people make decisions based off of visuals. So if you want to just pretty much cut to the chase, talk in visuals to get people to understand you or to believe what you're telling them is true. That They make up 50 to 75 percent of the population. 15 to 35 are sound right type people. These are people that think in what they have been told in the past. And 12 to 15 percent of people are feeling type people. To find out how many times someone needs convinced, just ask them how many times does something have to prove itself before you are convinced? Or how many times do you need to see, hear, read, or do something before you think you are competent in using it? 8 to 10 percent of people assume something will be right for them. They just, these are the easy sales. They just say, yeah, you're probably right. 50 percent of people can be persuaded to believe anything if you just present believable information in their chosen representational system enough times. And I told you before how to figure out what is enough times. Other people, 25% of society, make decisions purely based on their own personal time requirements being met. Once they feel that they have thought about something long enough, they make a decision. If someone says they'll get back to you in three months, they normally mean dramatically less than that. If you contact them, say, in three weeks and reference that it feels like three months, they will probably agree with you and then make a decision. 15% of people are almost never convinced of almost anything. These are the people that go through life mistrusting most people. The only way to try and convince these people is to tell them straight up that you're aware that they are a person that is very hard to convince and that no time will probably feel like the right time to try something different. So why don't they just give it a try today? Then you have your emotional direction type people, meaning how much impact emotion has on a person's life, whether emotions are pervasive or non-pervasive. My emotions are definitely non-pervasive. I'm happy about some things and unhappy about other things at the same time. A person that has pervasive emotions will be either unhappy about everything or on cloud nine about everything. If you want to find out what type of person you're dealing with, just ask. In general, when you're happy about one thing, does that naturally make you happy about everything? Or, when in conversation, is it natural for you to switch from things you are happy to talk about to things that you are unhappy to talk about? Then you have emotional intensity. In general, I am more bold than timid. I enjoy the limelight, attention, and will risk putting others off by giving my point of view. Obviously, others cling to that which is certain. 
avoid risk, and enjoy routines. If you want to find out who you're dealing with, just ask. Do you enjoy more routine or change in life? Or do you enjoy doing that which you know you can do or trying things that are different that you may fail at? In the next presentation, I'm going to cover how we decide, develop preferences, and focus attention. If there was anything that you didn't quite get in this presentation, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to explain it. Till next time.